Sea Street, California, and that was a really good contest. The waves were actually perfect for it. Um, sea Street, Sea Street is just a really, really long peeling right, so you can get ten maneuvers on it, and it was it actually had some sizes like head high, and so I was really happy because those are the waves that kind of suit my surfing, so I can really like blow up and show my um, show my skills. So I did well in that contest, and then right after that, I flew to Florida for the AFB three star. And the waves were fun too. They were a lot different. Like it was a small beach break, but it was. Um, but I really liked that wave. It was at Shepherd's Park, and it's a really punchy wave. Like if you get the right ones, you can get really good sections and really good maneuvers in, and it connects to the inside. So you can get a long ride if you pick the right one. And I've um, I've done a couple of contests down there at Shepherd's Park, so I knew the wave, but I was confident because I'd won on that wave already. So I was really excited to surf it. And I surfed a couple heats. All the girls were surfing really well in the contest, so it was a difficult contest. But I got to the final, and I was really determined because I really wanted to um, start my year right and win a junior pro. So I went out there with the mindset that I could do it, like I could beat the girls, and I could surf the best because I knew out here and I was confident with the way. So I went out there and I did my best, and it paid off. I had my coach with me, my clown, that helped a lot as well. He showed me where to line up, gave me a few pointers and what to do, so it was a good contest. I was really happy to come away with that win. Everything's really, it's a lot of mental uh, that goes into it, because if you're not feeling like you can win, chances are you're going to go out there and you're not going to do a lot. So before a heat, I kind of just find a quiet place and get in my zone. I watch the waves for a little bit and listen to my music. I try and pump myself up. I look at the waves and I picture myself on the waves, like doing the maneuvers that I need to do to get through the heat. And just tell myself that I can, I can do it. Like I can get through the heat. I can do the maneuvers. I'm as good or better than these girls. Go out there, hold position, be aggressive, get the waves, finish your waves. So they're little key points that really help me do great in the heat. Actually, before I got out of heat, I listened to a lot of Soka. Soka really pumped me up. Uh, what, is on my, what is on my playlist right now? Michelle Montana songs and Paul Cannon songs. Or, what's my favorite? I really, Mr. Set was really great. Everyone liked that song. RDX's Jump, that was, that was a good song. That actually really pumped me up for my, for my heat. I from that. I go out and I'm going through a Lana Del Rey phase. Like I really, really like her songs. And uh, they're not they're not the most exciting songs, like they don't but they I still I don't know. They get me in the zone, like they zone me out and make me focus.
to do core training every day. I like to do, uh, I like to exercise right as I wake up. I'll do sit-ups and I'll do planks and push-ups and just a lot of core work. Um, and then I'll probably go surf and in the evening I like to go running like sunset. I'll, do, I'll run a couple miles and maybe do some yoga. But really, uh, mainly it is surfing. Uh, my training is just surfing as much as I can, trying to perfect my technique and get my maneuvers bigger and more powerful. So there's a lot that goes into it, but surfing is the most important. I try to, try, try to eat as healthy as possible as I can. Usually, um, I like eating eggs and eggs and protein when I wake up, and like bacon and stuff when I wake up in the morning. I feel like that holds my stomach and it really gives me a lot of energy. If I'm gonna work out, I, I'll eat a banana or a lot of fruit. I eat a lot, a lot of fruit and vegetables. I think that's really important. So if I get hungry or I snack, and I snack through the day, it's usually fruits or vegetables. Because that really holds my stomach as well. And um, I usually have a light lunch and a big dinner. Like in a big dinner, like pastas or fish um, or steak or whatever's in the house. But I try to keep it as healthy as possible and eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and then drink a lot of water as well. Water's really important. So nutrition does play a big part because you have to make sure your body is at its best and um, ready to perform for you when you need it to in um, contests and so on. If I don't eat or I eat junk food, like I'm just eating chips or I have fast food for lunch or something, I do, I feel more tired if I, or I, feel, I eat a lot of carbohydrates and not a lot of um, vegetables or protein. I feel more tired and I never have as much energy. Or if I, say, if I had uh, like a steak and vegetables or a salad for lunch or a lot of fruit and I go surfing, I always have more energy and I feel like more lively. I don't know. It's weird. But you it definitely does affect your surfing. Not drastically. I mean I can still have a good session if I'm eating junk food. Because I do eat junk food every once in a while. I'm still a teenager but try to cut it down as much as I can. Well I would really like to get on the tour for 2015. I'm training really hard um, on the junior circuit this year and doing as many QSs as possible this year, but next year I'm really going to stick to the QS events, try and do as many as I can, travel through Europe and wherever they, wherever they are, and really try and train hard with my coach and fine tune my surfing so that I am ready to go against the best in the world and that I can compete and compare. My role models in surfing are definitely Sally Fitzgibbon and Chris Moore. They're actually, they're on the top right now. I've always been inspired by Sally Fitzgibbon. She's my favorite surfer. And she's so determined. Like, I surfed with her a couple times. Um, I did count with her and so on. And you can see, like, how determined she is to get a title and how crazy of a competition surfer she is. She's always really focused. And she goes out there and she does her job. And Chris, she's an amazing surfer too. She's got to be one of the most progressive female surfers. So I love to watch her surf. And I want to hopefully see that one day my surfing can be as good as hers. So those are my two favorites. The ones that I look up to and inspire me. So my goal would be one of the best females, like one of the best open or women in the world. Hopefully at the end of the year, my surfing will go up to that level. The best thing is that I can travel as much as I want to. Like, um, if there's a contest in Tahiti, if there's a contest in Hawaii or Australia, my sponsor, more than likely my sponsors will say yes, you, you should go do it I'll, um, and they'll pay for me to go and travel. So I'm in a really good um, place right now with my sponsors and also um, with my surfing. I'm confident enough that I can. I know I can do the best contest in the world and I can actually comp um, compete with the girls and get a good result. So I'm happy with where I am. I'm just hoping to get bigger and better. I never in a million years thought I would be here. What? 
first got up on that, um, my first wave, I still remember it. It was a little bit down from freight. And I, I loved it. I fell in love from the first wave, but I didn't think it would be anything serious. I mean, my brothers were traveling and they were surfing for Barbados, but I never thought I could do that. It seemed really far-fetched. And then I just kept surfing and it kind of all fell into place. That first contest as well really helped me because I remember the first contest I won and that feeling. And once you have that feeling, you want to get it back and you want to have that feeling as much as you can. So that really motivated me. There actually are a lot of good roms coming up. I see them out in the water all the time and I just see more and more each time. So I'm really happy about that. Ah, my advice to them would just be to never give up. You, like, there have been times in my career when I'm like, do I, is this what I really want to do? Or like, when it gets hard, because nothing in life is easy. You have to be, it's, so it's not always um, fun to wake up at like at dawn and try and go surf in the cold water or surfing every day and getting sunburnt and super tired. But if you can push through the hard times, and it's never easy when you're losing contests either, because you always want to win, but you have to know that you can't win all of them. So you have to stay positive and stay determined, for sure. Just never give up. I'm like this. Like all of my sponsors, Rossi, Red Bull, Dragon, the kind, they've all been really supportive and they're they're the ones that are helping me complete my dream, you know? They're making it a reality, so I can't thank them enough. Dad and my mom and dad for sure. I mean they're your biggest supporters. So if my mom wasn't behind me from the time I was a I got on the surfboard, the first wave she was in there chopping, um, clapping and cheering me on. So she definitely plays a lot um, a big part. She makes sure that I have everything and that I'm always ready for a contest and have what I need. She makes everything possible for me. So. It isn't possible out there.